Hi, this is a process video illustrating a technique called glazing, which I've used in an oil painting to um, convey the folds of fabric. It's very good for showing intense colour as it catches the light without making the paint go chalky, which it would if you were to mix white with it. So it's a technique I really like and would like to use more. And I took the opportunity to record my steps um, so you can see what you think. There's the serviette again and I've done a pencil uh, line drawing um, to map out the shape. And I've got my rigger and I'm just going to start doing the lines. So I'll start on this side so that as I'm right handed I don't smudge my work. And um, kind of just define the edges a bit. Looking for those very dark folds and sharp edges first. always been fascinated by the way fabric folds kind of bulge around curves and right better not try and do this one handed anymore but there we go you get the idea Okay, um, I didn't film while I was doing it, but I have attempted a second version of the undercoat. Um, there's the serviette and here's the um, painted black and white version. Um, so if this is dry tomorrow, I will try doing a glaze. Um, using blue again and I'll try and do it thinner and not lose the texture from this um, uh, undercoat. We'll see. Um, I wanted to show you these before I continue with the glazing exercise. This is a mezzo tint um, which is a sort of etching that I bought many many years ago when I was young enough to have a bit of cash and no responsibility. Kuro Yanagi. Um, I believe Kuro Yanagi is still active in Canada. Um, so that's a great inspiration for me. I've always loved this. And um, here we are. It's dry after yesterday's um, repaint. There's the model and um, I've just been testing out what brush to use and I'm going to try, unlike last time's failure, I'm going to try using undiluted ultramarine, French ultramarine, which is a, a transparent colour. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of rub it on rather differently to last time in the hope that this will be more successful. We'll see. I really want to kind of stain without, oh, I think this needs a little bit of medium, don't really, yeah a little bit I think, just a little bit, um, too dry, I don't want to drag the underlying colour off, which is part of the problem from last time. And once this is done, I'm going to go over it with a um, natural soft, natural brush, natural bristle soft brush, like a sable or something, which I usually use for watercolour. Um. Thank you. Could you turn them off, please? Thank you, Brooke.
potatoes. <laughs> Take a bit more. And I'm going to try not to do any uh, shading with the blue this time. I think that was another mistake I made. I was confusing um, shading the colour by putting it in on different thicknesses with just relying on the underpainting for the shaping and colouring. I think I have to trust that once it's dry, the um, modelling will show through in a convincing way. I've done the string again. Um, and I'll leave that blank. Just trying to spread this really thinly. Okay, I'm going to uh, pause now and come back to you when I've got more, uh, when it's all covered and then I can show you the blending. Here it is now um, covered in a um, wash of very slightly diluted ultramarine and um, then this is a softer brush and I'm just going to try and basically even out the glaze so that there's no texture on the glaze and all the um, texture is from the underlying painting. Um, and I'm just keeping that brush as dry as possible to avoid brush marks. And um, taking it over the edges with a view to cutting in um, on the next step of the process with the background. It's a very nice kind of slightly brainless activity. <laughs> very therapeutic um, and requiring almost zero concentration compared to... Oop, got a bit of a brush. A brush there. Get that. Uh, compared to the underpainting, which required quite a lot of concentration. But obviously, unlike doing uh, portraits or anything like that, it doesn't really matter, uh, unless you're a purist in that regard, whether the um, shape of the napkin exactly matches the shape uh, of the painting. Um, My in-house artistic uh, first point of contact for criticism uh, kindly had a look at it and um, he's normally primed to comment on um, proportions and likeness so he went straight in with a very reasonable point that uh, the shape wasn't quite right. But, uh... So um, I'm going to add in now the uh, string. So this, this uh, glazed cloth is dry so if you look at my palette here this is um, I've mixed this color up for the string and this is a rigger brush a nice long thin one and you can get a nice relatively thin consistency and just draw it through the paint so that you can then get a really nice um, smooth and sometimes very narrow um, so I'm just going to do, this is my first coat on the string and I didn't uh, stress too much about the um, glazing going over the string because I knew I was going to go over it afterwards. Right, so I'm not going to uh, make you watch while I do all of that, but that's going to progress across the string. And the other thing to show you is I'm going to do a second coat on the background. So I've got here French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber, which mix together to make a really nice chromatic black. And with that, I'm gonna put a little bit of medium in. 
to make it flow and dry more easily. And then I'm going to use this fairly soft brush and I'm going to just cut in along the edges to intensify the black in the background and increase the contrast with the blue of the fabric. Carry on with that and then film a shot of it when it's done. Okay, so this needs another layer, I think, of glazing, and I've done the first layer of the string. Um, but before I do that, what I have been forgetting to do, and what I now see is quite necessary to get an even coat of glaze, is to put something called a couch on. So I'm just spreading a bit of liquid. Um, over the image just overlapping to the edge so that when I put the next layer of glaze on it glides on more smoothly and therefore the underlying picture is clearer okay so, okay so the final coat of glaze has gone on the blue and I've done some touching up on the string and now I'm just doing a final coat on the background so I've again laid down a couch um, just to help it glide and I'm just kind of going around the edges cutting in um, it's a very slightly more browny black this time uh, for my last coat I thought it was all looking a little bit cold so I quite like the contrast I've always liked brown and blue together so this is just it's not brown but it's warmer a warmer black And I think um, this might be finished once that's done. So thank you very much for watching. I'll post a final shot uh, once it's totally done and signed. But you get the general idea. Hi. So the painting is finished and I'm finally applying a layer of exhibition varnish to bring out the rich colour and to protect the painting while the oil paint finishes its drying curing process. This is one of my favourite bits. I love varnishing and I love the smell. So thank you very much for watching this video. It's been really fun to make and I really hope it's useful and encourages people to have a go at this technique and one of the reasons the old masters liked it apparently was that as pigment was so expensive it was particularly favoured for um, painting where um, they were using very expensive pigments like I think lapis lazuli so blue and um, it, it basically means you don't need to use so much pigment because a lot of the work is done by the underpainting so I hope you enjoyed the video and um, please let me know what you think.